exclusive celebration requires an exclusive introduction into the celebration. A general celebration is something which just unifies us in the spirit of gratefulness and compassion. And that has given a rise to our joint expression for water, sacred water. I heard that story about sacred water, which you probably already heard from me, because I like it so much, I told it often. That we think water is just water, but it's not. Water is liquid ecstasy of the Supreme Lord. The original manifestation of water comes when Narada Muni he sees in a dream that there's a planet with very beautiful people, extremely beautiful. And each one of them has something missing. One is missing an ear, somebody has a, an eye problem, another one the nose is strange. Otherwise they are totally beautiful. So finds it very strange, so he very politely goes and says, excuse me, could you please say what's wrong here? Why everybody has some physical deficiency? And the person he asks him, he tells him, well, you know, I heard that there is a person called Narada. <coughs> he's singing the ragas and he's making so many mistakes. So here, this is the planet of the personified ragas. And we are all reflecting the mistakes this Narada makes when he sings. Narada is here and he says, no, 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 no. And he says, <laughs> and he says this is too much, too much. So, so I ask, you have any idea what, what this person Narada could do about that? So that this will not take place? Yes, the person said, he should go to Saraswati and learn the ragas properly. <laughs> That's what he's missing, he's just singing, but he don't know how to sing nicely. Which makes a mistake. So, then, when Narada Muni comes back from his dream, he can remember everything. And he goes and he approaches Saraswati. Saraswati, I've had a very bad dream. And in that dream I was told, I must learn the ragas from you. Could you be so kind and teach me all the ragas so that I will not make aparat when I chant? Nara Saraswati, she looks at Narada and she says, nice boy, I will teach him the ragas. So she takes a long time and he's a very good student and he sings the ragas sweeter and sweeter and sweeter and sweeter. So much it becomes very famous. And the Lord, the Supreme Lord, also hears about it. He says, can you please send this Narada to me? I want to hear a concert. So Narada is taken all the way to the Supreme Lord. And he's starting to sing his raga so sweetly that the Supreme Lord and his divine female counterpart, they melt. They melt into the causal ocean. So there's a very deep meaning behind that because from this actually comes the origin of the universe and everything because the causal ocean is the underlying principle of the whole creation. Everything rests in the causal ocean, the Supreme Lord himself. So this causal ocean is the melted nectar of the ecstasy of Radha and Krishna. Now it wants to share this nectar, because that's what it comes from. It comes from the nectar, so it's for sharing the nectar. So that is when Lord Vama Nadev, on the purpose of defeating the King Bali, is penetrating the covering of the universe and letting some of the causal ocean come into this universe. And that became the Ganges River. And that Ganges River again became all the rivers and all the oceans of the world. 
So actually the liquid ecstasy of the Supreme Lord is everywhere where you find water. So the divine substance of water, that is connection to life. Without water there is no life. So water contains much more what the eye can see. There is a documentary out there you can watch, it says, we don't know a drop of what is water. Very amazing documentary about Schauberger and and all his discoveries on the on the water, also Emoto, etc. So this water principle, this holy water principle, is actually a divine principle. It goes all the way to Radha and Krishna. Can you imagine in this story? So when I glorify water or when I glorify holy rivers, or when I join with anybody who loves water and has that same respect for water, I feel very spiritually united with them, regardless whether they know everything we know about water or not. Or they may have other divine stories about water as well, like in the <coughs> cosmology of some of the natives of our planet Earth. There's also some very beautiful stories on water, etc. So, I personally rejoice very much to join together with everybody and glorify water. And in this glorification, we're actually glorifying the Lord of our heart. And we are glorifying life itself, nature itself. Mother Earth itself, the divine female Shakti, because Gangama. And we had the chance to participate in the presentation of the Amazonas uh, production for the protection of the Holy Amazon River, which is very, very, very important. Being the Amazon, the lung of the whole planet. Even though it's on a far out continent, it gives oxygen to us here. And what else? Well, it's very, very interesting. You know, that's why Vandana Shiva told me, let's make a global citizenship. Let's, make, let's convince people to understand that you're not a Polish person, Czech person, or no, you are a universal citizen. We have to look after this in this spirit. So the song we were able to chant for was actually the Samba, which came from the Kumba Mela. And on Valentine's Day, <coughs> it was such a simple, simple song, we never thought it would become a hit. <coughs> but it's pretty catchy. And on Valentine's Day, we had an offering in Kumba Mela of all the holy rivers in the Sangam of the Kumbha Mela from around the world. We had 210 dancers participating. All the countries of the world and all the holy rivers came to offer obeisance to Ganga on this Valentine's Day. And the message was, Gang Ganga, you are our Valentine. You are our love, you are a life-sustaining, merciful liquid. So it was like a Mother Earth chant, so we can chant that together all together. It's very simple. Even a child can take part of it. And you can also chant it with any variety of holy invocation. It's really easy. <laughs> <laughs>